When Nintendo released the Wii in 2006, Microsoft were already one year into the launch of their second system, the Xbox 360. Nintendo licked their wounds after the failure of the GameCube, but came out strong with the launch of the Nintendo Wii, and history will tell us that it went on to be highly successful for Nintendo, selling over 101 million units. So what's the link between the original Xbox and the Nintendo Wii? Well, you see, both the original Xbox and the Wii are easily exploitable, using software methods that cost almost next to nothing. Neither system requires any hardware modification, and now, thanks to simple methods, you can play emulators and homebrew on both systems. Now, I've covered both systems extensively in previous videos, and feel free to check them out in the cards above. The Nintendo Wii and original Xbox both have arguably the largest and most impressive homebrew and emulation library out there. So if you were thinking of taking the plunge, let's try to figure out which one is the superior system. Welcome to this episode of Homebrew Wars. So we have the original Xbox and the Nintendo Wii. Both systems have been around for a long time and both systems make exceptional homebrew and emulation boxes. With the very simple methods to soft mod both, I thought it would be a good idea to compare both the systems off against each other See what's available as far as homebrew emulation ports, applications, and utilities, and really make a determination on which system is better in 2020 as far as picking up a system to mod. Okay, so let's compare the two systems side by side. On the left, we have the Nintendo Wii. The 729MHz IBM PowerPC Broadway CPU powers the system, and the 423MHz ATI Hollywood GPU handles the graphics and other assorted I.O. The Wii comes with a total of 88 megabytes, but for all intents and purposes, only 64 megabytes are available for development, otherwise known as MEM2. The Wii can handle both 480i and 480p progressive scan modes, depending on the cable that you are using. There's also 512 meg of internal flash storage, and the system storage can be expanded via SD cards and USB. And on the right is the original Xbox, the 733MHz custom Intel Celeron or Pentium 3 copper mine based processor, depending on who you ask, powers the device. The GPU is the 233MHz NVIDIA NV2A. The Xbox also contains 64MB of shared memory, that is, shared between the GPU and the CPU. 4 controller ports and 8GB of hard disk storage, of course expandable with a modded system, all the way up to 2TB. The original Xbox can handle HD resolutions all the way up to 1080i, and supports 4x3 letterboxing and widescreen modes. Although a generation apart, spec-wise, they are actually quite comparable, at least on paper. Both systems can be easily modded with soft modding. The Wii with the Letterbomb exploit and the original Xbox with the 007 or Splinter Cell save game exploit. One of the most compelling reasons to mod your device is emulation. This is the bread and butter of both systems and one of the main reasons that you would want to either mod the Wii or the original Xbox. Both systems do a terrific job with emulation covering both 8 and 16 bit home computers and console emulators. In general, most things are pretty similar across the board, but there are some things unique to both systems. The original Xbox has pretty good Nintendo 64 emulation utilizing Surreal 64. Although the original Xbox and the Wii are quite dated, they can still run Nintendo 64 pretty well. However, the edge goes to the original Xbox that supports more games over the Nintendo Wii. Surreal 64 also supports 720p HD modes for a crisper display and even takes advantage of a 128MB Xbox mod to allow you to play some games better overall like Conker's Bad Fur Day, Perfect Dark, Majora's Mask and more. The original Xbox also makes for an excellent arcade emulation box with MAME, Final Burn Alpha and Killer Instinct all running on the hardware at excellent frame rates. Many people still use their original Xbox as their go-to for arcade ROMs.
the Nintendo Wii overall has a weaker experience when it comes to arcade games. However, this is not the end of the story. The Nintendo Wii has backward compatibility with the Nintendo GameCube. Now you could argue that this is not homebrew specific, but for those people that use a later model Wii with GameCube backward compatibility to remove, the excellent homebrew utility known as Nintendon't will play GameCube ISO images straight off your SD card or USB device. This makes the Wii a very compelling system to mod, and you really must decide whether arcade emulation is what you prefer or GameCube backward compatibility. Based on your choice will determine which system is better. For me, I still do think that the original Xbox provides the better emulation experience with its fast library, better Nintendo 64 and PlayStation 1 emulation, and overall better power and performance. Next up is homebrew games and ports. The Nintendo Wii holds up its own in this department with over 200 homebrew games and ports available for the system. The Wii also has some exclusively Wii developed homebrew titles as well, some of which are still being recently developed and there's still a very strong active community working on homebrew games and ports for the system. Over on the original Xbox, there's quite a few, including the famous classics like Doom, Quake 1, 2 and 3, Descent 1 and 2, Scum VM and more, and there's also a very good port of Aliens vs Predator and OpenGL ports of Quake. Half-Life X is also running, but I do recommend a 128MB Xbox for this one. Just like the Wii, the original Xbox still has a very active community developing homebrew for the system, including something that I've been working on myself. Stay tuned for that towards the end of the video. There's also smaller ports of homebrew games that utilize SDL. Overall, however, I would say that the Nintendo Wii takes the edge here. In general, the Wii has a stronger library of homebrew games, but that's no slight on the original Xbox, which still has a very strong showing. One of the best reasons for modding an Xbox is for Xbox Media Center or XBMC. We've covered this amazing utility on the channel before and it's easily better than the Nintendo Wii's media player, which in itself certainly isn't bad, but XBMC for all intents and purposes is a killer homebrew app for the original Xbox that ended up turning into a fully commercial product which is now known as Kodi. If you want a modded system to stream video, well, you should probably use an Nvidia Shield, but if you had to choose between the Wii and the OG Xbox and wanted a good media player, then the Xbox original simply has the best option with XBMC. Now we get into the interesting topic of applications and utilities. First of all, the original Xbox has dashboard replacements such as Unreal X, Avalanche and XBMC which we just mentioned, all of which allow you to do so much more than the regular Xbox's dashboard, including rip games to your hard drive, FTP and web server support, load trainers and cheat codes, file managers, Samba networking support and more. Over on the Wii, there are some of the best homebrew utilities ever designed. There is no dashboard replacement, however, on the Wii, but there are some utilities that offer very similar features. CleanRip allows you to rip both GameCube and Wii discs to your SD card and USB. Then there's the Homebrew Channel, which is just the launcher for all other homebrew that's installed on your SD card. And then we have the Nintendo Wii's killer homebrew app known as USB Loader GX. This tool allows you to rip and play all your games from USB or your SD card with CoverFlow. Essentially, this is the dashboard replacement on the Wii. There are also similar apps such as the configurable USB loader, not the best name but a very useful app. Some people prefer this over the USB loader GX, but this is a personal preference. In general, the Wii has some excellent homebrew utilities that will manage your library of Wii and GameCube games for you very well. Another topic to discuss is the ease of use. For the original Xbox, soft modding the system is pretty easy to do. However, you'll be required to get familiar with things like FTP because you will be copying your homebrew manually over to your Xbox from your PC across the network. The Wii undoubtedly has the edge here with the homebrew browser. Once you have this installed and assuming that you are connected to the internet, this software will automate browsing and installing Homebrew on your Nintendo Wii rather nicely. You'll still need to copy ROMs and whatnot to your SD card and USB device, but it does make life much easier, especially for the beginner who wants to check out Homebrew but doesn't really know where to start. There is definitely a larger learning curve on the original Xbox. So we have really good points for both systems. Now, before you tell me that I'm fence sitting, I think really what determines what system you should go with for modding for Homebrew comes down to personal preference. 
If you want to play GameCube, run all your games from USB, run emulators and have a huge access to a library of homebrew, but perhaps not arcade games, then the Nintendo Wii is your system. If you want to play arcade emulators, have a good Nintendo 64 and PlayStation 1 emulator as well, then the original Xbox is the way to go. In conclusion, both systems are cheap to pick up, easy to soft mod and offer exceptional experiences for homebrew and you really can't go wrong either way, with active communities still working on development of new stuff all the time. Recently, the original Xbox saw a port of Hexen 2 and even I've been working on a port of Postal for the original Xbox. I'm hoping to release this sometime in 2020. Over on the Wii, there's some exclusive homebrew that is of high quality and you'll get hours of enjoyment from them and the ability to load up GameCube ROMs using Nintendo really is the icing on the cake. There's also another thing that a modern Nintendo Wii offers and that's an online community that continues to play Super Smash Bros and Mario Kart to this day. There's still communities of people playing Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 3 and Black Ops Online. But over on the original Xbox, you can still play online with X-Link and many people are still playing Halo 2 online even to this day. Unfortunately, however, many other games aren't really being played as often and that is a bit of a shame, but you can still get your Xbox online with X-Link and enjoy multiplayer Halo 2. In the end, it's really hard to pick a winner because there's so much to love about both systems and ultimately the decision is up to you. But I can't keep you guys in suspense any longer. If I had to pick one system to get for emulation, homebrew, ports and utilities, it has to be the original Xbox. The Wii is certainly no slouch. And as you've seen, it's a very capable system and it wouldn't be a bad decision if you ended up going down that path. But for me, I think the OG Xbox with its power and performance and some of the really cool stuff you can do and just load it up full of arcade ROMs really just makes it a little more compelling over the Nintendo Wii in 2020. Well guys, we're going to leave it here for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, you know what to do. Let me know in the comments below. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now. Thank you.